Hello everyone and welcome to the Solano College Sports Network. My name is Holden Beers and alongside me for tonight's game, Drew Kirby and Robert Murray. Tonight's game is between the, is between the undefeated 3-0 Rodriguez Mustangs as they take on the 0-2 Jesse Bethel Jaguars. I'll start with you, Drew. What can Bethel do to force an upset against a team like Rodriguez? Yeah, well, Bethel is a bit of a mystery team going into this game. And they have no stats on max preps. However, we do know they are 0-2 in their first two games, like you said, getting outscored 76-22. But not only will the Jaguars be hungry for their first win of the season, but they're also eager for some revenge. These two teams faced off last year on this field, and let me tell you, Holden, it was not pretty. Losing 53-0, the Jaguars team is playing for their pride, and if they want to win this ball game, it's going to have to start with QB Kyle McNeil. McNeil is just a junior and already has a year of varsity experience under his belt, playing a full year at QB as a sophomore. If he wants to give the Jaguars a chance to win this game, it's going to have to be through the air. This Rodriguez team has already proven you can't be a run-only offense and expect to beat them. Rodriguez is going to stack the box and expect the run. So for McNeil to be successful tonight, he's going to have to be aggressive through the passing game and above all else, make the right decisions. Yeah, I mean, we saw what Rodriguez did to the run-heavy offense that Fairfield has, and that game ended in a blowout, ending in Rodriguez's favor. I mean, Robert, what can Rodriguez do to keep their momentum going to start the year? Well, yeah, Rodriguez, what they want to do to keep their momentum is do the same thing they've been doing on offense. They get the run involved early, but then they open up that pass game. Dylan Burke has been playing amazing football these first three games, passing 12 touchdowns and seven of those going to Jermaine Missouri. Jermaine Missouri, once again, last week over 130 yards. I mean, the kid's just a stud, as you can see. And their defense, their defense allows them to get the ball back quickly. They aren't on the field long. They force a lot of pressure, get in the backfield quite often, having a lot of tackles for losses. And Amir Williams Palaamo, great game last week, the defensive tackle for Rodriguez. Getting in the backfield, that's what you love to see from your DT, forcing a lot of havoc. And I would expect them to just do the same thing, honestly. Fourth quarter last week, a little sloppy. I expect King, Miles King, right? That's He'll clean that up, get them ready for this week, and no problems there. Yeah, I mean, we see what Rodriguez can do to teams that are lower level like Jesse Bethel is and we'll just see how the game goes today but first we are moments away from kickoff but I, we'd like to give a word to our sponsor James Thomas Media your one-stop shop for all your video production needs And welcome back everyone to the game today as National Anthem just finished up. And as we were talking about before, I mean, Rodriguez's offense is just so high power when it comes to the passing game. I mean, Dylan Burke has had a phenomenal year with over 600 yards passing, 66% completion percentage, and 12 touchdowns on the air with zero interceptions. I mean, that's almost perfect QB play. And he's supported by Jermaine Missouri and Jamar Missouri, the Missouri brothers, as we know. And he's also supported by Manciano Ciez, the tight end, who has also had a solid year both offensively and defensively. And looks like Rodriguez will be receiving the kick to start the game. So we will see that high-powered offense right out the gate. Yeah, I think a term for Burke they would use is smooth operator. Mm. You know, just gets the team down the field. I wouldn't call him a game manager. He can make plays happen. But he's just so smooth back there. And his progression from junior to senior year has been incredible to watch. Yeah, I mean, I'm pretty sure he averages about 25 yards per completion, which is insane if you think about it. Because those are all – every completion, if you think about it, would be a big play. And it's because of all the long touchdown throws he's had to Jermaine and Jamar Missouri over the course of these first three games. 
I mean, it's just been a great, great thing to watch. Yeah, I actually think that's more of a wide receiver stat, just showing right. how much Jermaine Missouri really helps his offense. I mean, if he's on a go route and he, he loses his man, that's an 80-yard 80, 80 touchdown right there, you know? So. Yeah, I mean, Jermaine Missouri's got 15 receptions and 393 yards, or 83 yards, excuse me, to start the year over the first three games. And this crowd is getting into it for the kickoff as kicking off for Bethel. Looks like number 25, Anthony Monts, a junior. Come on now, make some noise. And back deep to return for Rodriguez is number one, Jermaine Missouri, part of that star powered offense. And number three, Kalen Highbaugh, who also gets some touches in the ground game as we know they like to spread the ball around spread the ball around on the ground as well. Yeah, I think on this kickoff they don't want to kick anywhere near Jermaine Missouri. Like just too hot, dynamic of a player. Yeah, don't I mean, want the ball to get into his hands. We've seen what he can do, not just on you know, the go routes get into the end zone, but also run after catch. He catches wide receiver screens almost every game. It's a part of their playbook and a part of the game plan every week for Rodriguez. Last week, Jermaine had a 75-yard punt return. Yeah, I mean, he's he's so versatile around the field. It'll be interesting to see how this Rodriguez team does once league play starts, as we do know they play Vanden next week. Yeah, I'm very excited for that game. Definitely going to be one of our better games so far early into the season. Kicking off from the 40-yard line is Bethel. And Missouri will return the kick on the far side of the field. And he's met by a couple Jaguar players, one of them being Captain Damani Jackson. Bethel playing a risky game there, kicking it straight to Germ Jermaine, Missouri. I mean, if you're, if you're Bethel, you don't want to be scared of a good team like this you got to be aggressive if you want to have a chance to win and then same thing for Rodriguez you can't sleep on this team you don't want to just lull your way through it exactly so first and 10 here for Rodriguez on the 38 yard line Burke back in the shotgun brings high ball in motion and he gets it he going to the outside and he gets a first down on the first play of the game Nice downfield blocking there from Rodriguez and a good run from Highball. Yeah, I mean, I can't ask for a better way to open up a game like that with the first down. Beautiful work done. Yeah, Bethel's going to need to contain the box a little bit more, make sure they can't let those explosive players get to their explosive plays like they want to. Yeah, and we see Rodriguez run jet sweeps like that all the time. Handoff up the middle to Monciano Ciaz, and he gets to the outside, gets a good run going. He's going down the field and trips up at the 25-yard line. Some great blocking so far in the run game by Rodriguez to start the game. And he was barely touched up until the end of that play. We see that from Miles King. He likes to start the game off running the football early, and then he'll slowly shift into a pass, more heavy offense. And Rodriguez is going with a hurry-up offense here. First and 10 for the third play of this drive. And Ciaz gets the ball again, cuts it outside. And he gets about a couple yards for being, before being brought down by multiple Jaguar players. They were there ready to contain that play. And there is a flag on the field around where the line of scrimmage was. Uh, looks like it will be on Rodriguez. And it is holding. I'll bring them back 10 yards. Yeah, going back to that JV game that just got done playing, these refs were not afraid to blow the whistle. It was almost after every single play you see yellow flag on the field. Very curious to see if they continue it with this game going into varsity. Yeah, and I mean, you'd expect that with JV being as they're <laughs> younger, not as disciplined as maybe the varsity would. But, I mean, you never know because right out the gate we see a holding call on a decent run from Ciaz. Play action pass from Burke. He drops back, looks to the right side of the field, throws it up for Missouri, and he catches it. That is Jamar Missouri, the, the senior. 
and call it off. And I believe the refs are might be calling it off. I mean, beautiful throw from Burke there. Just absolutely put it on the money. There is a flag down on the field near where the ball was caught. They might be talking over pass I interference. Believe, I believe they just told Jamar Missouri that he shoved off. And yes, indeed he did. Offensive pass interference, no touchdown for Rodriguez. And that'll bring them back even more. So refs definitely yeah. That's getting ready to throw the laundry here tonight. That's so deflating if you're Jamar, Missouri. You're having not what a start you want to your season, but that play could have helped your mentality and make you do better in this game. Yeah, I mean, he hasn't gotten as many targets as he thought he would maybe this year. He only has nine receptions, but also has 126 yards and three TDs. And his little brother, Jermaine, Missouri, is kind of outshining him on the offense a little bit. But so, and that might be how it is to start out the, the year against teams that you know aren't on your – on your same level par. So outside pitch here to Monciano Cies. And he's got running room. And gets wrapped up by a few Jaguars players. But that's a decent gain on first and looks like it's about 30. I love Cies lowering the shoulder there, laying the hit, not afraid to take on the contact. Just shows he's willing to lay a bruise. Yeah, I mean, he's he's been a part of that versatile workload that they do in the run game as in when it comes to Rodriguez him and Kalen Highball get many touches and they were equal in rushing attempts going into this game and so far CS has seen the bulk of the carries in this drive so second along here for Rodriguez Burke drops back and he rolls out to his right and he's gonna get sacked 51 Sacked by, I believe, number 50, actually. Cornelius Chenevert, senior, with the sack. As no one there was really open for Burke. That was good contained by Bethel, not allowing Burke to escape the pocket, make a big play happen, as you've seen Rodriguez do before. They always have big explosive plays when Burke is able to scramble out of the pocket. So now third and long for Rodriguez. And you don't really look for them to get into field goal range as they don't have a true kicker. Burke drops back and throws deep for J Jermaine Missouri, and it's just over his head, which is tough to do because he's 6'5". But that'll bring up fourth down for Rodriguez and very long. Yeah, just out of the reach of Missouri there. Got a fingertip on it. And, yeah, pretty impressive to outthrow a 6'5 man. You know, I don't care if it was – I'm very happy with that play, even though, of course, it didn't get completed. If it's third and long and you got a ways to go, go for the number one. Yeah, I mean, it's better to overthrow a receiver than underthrow him because mm -hmm. that usually ends up being an interception. And, I mean, that was a great uh, air time for Burke for right there, given how far the throw was. Well, and that's all you can ask as a big-time player. You want to make the big-time play and just give yourself a chance there. So now Rodriguez will punt on 4th and 28. Punting will be Sias from the 50-yard line. And he gets it off. And it bounces out right at the 10-yard line. Back to return for Bethel was number 23, Cameron Usher. But had no chance to return that one. You know, this is a great start for Bethel right there. I mean, that sack was huge. Even able to get them out of field goal range. I mean, would they have taken the field goal? Probably not. But still, that's exactly what you like to see to start the game for the Jaguars here. We'll see if they bring that momentum going into the offense now. I want to highlight that pump by Sia's way to get it out of bounds, not allow for a big return. Gives them great field position if you're Rodriguez. Bethel is going to have to work a 90-yard drive if they want to make something happen here. Yeah, drive is starting at exactly the 10-yard line on their own right hash. So we'll see what they can do with it. First and 10 here for Bethel. Back in, back at quarterback is number seven, Kylan McNeil. We know he was a sophomore starting quarterback last season. Handoff up the middle and it is completely stuffed by Paul Amu. Paul Amu, excuse me. I mean, that's what you see from this Rodriguez defense so much. They swarm to the backfield, get all those tackles for losses. And it's just a part of Paul Amu's game. I mean, he just wrecked that play on the line. Loss of one, second and 11 now for the Jaguars.
And McNeil, the quarterback, he's he's not a small guy. I mean, he's 6'3". Six, six uh, 185 as a junior. You can only imagine what his potential is for this Bethel team. A little bit of communication here for Bethel going on. McNeil is a captain as a junior. And they're going to go trips to the right side in the backfield with McNeil's number 22, Julian Reyes. I believe he had to carry the last play, and he gets it again. A little counter, and he gets a solid three-yard gain to give them a little more space for third down. Again, Rodriguez just swarms to the football like no other team we've seen this year. Yeah, I mean, defensively, they're led by not only Amari Williams, Paula Amu, but they're also led by Emil McPeters, number 10, as he leads the team in solo and total tackles. He also has two sacks on the year, an interception, and a forced fumble, along with five tackles for loss, including the sacks. So now third and eight after the three-yard gain for Bethel. Rodriguez with one safety back. And they hand the ball off. And he runs out of bounds for about a four-yard gain, but not enough for the first down. That was Cameron Usher with the carry. So now they will bring out the punt team, it looks like, four and out. I mean, I understand wanting to get the run involved early, but you're doing Rodriguez a favor there running on third and long. I would like to see more of a pass on that down and distance if you're Bethel. Yeah, I got to agree with you, Robert. I mean, I understand it. Of course, I, I get it. But you're not going to get a first down running the ball three straight times on this Rodriguez defense. It's, they're no. going to need more. They're very stout up front. So now back to return on fourth and five for Rodriguez is Jermaine Missouri, who we know returned a punt last week and punting for Bethel as it's high and short. Looked like it got tipped by Jamar, Jamar Missouri, looks like, and there was a little bit of contact after the play. Looks like unsportsmanlike conduct is going to be called yep. on number 12, Derek Anderson. Yeah, I mean, that was way after the play. They were block, blocking each other and kind of drove e each other to the ground. And indeed, unsportsmanlike conduct looks like it's going to be the call as the refs just signal that there. And we'll see who it's against because this could be crucial for both teams. And it is on Bethel. So that will be a 15-yard penalty after an already short punt putting Rodriguez in the red zone to start the drive. Yeah, that's the thing about high school football. I mean, so many drives get started in just great field position. And because of that, Rodriguez, they, they're great because of it. They, they definitely know how to use it to their advantage. Yeah, I mean, they've been a great red zone team all season long, scoring in, in all, all of their uh, trips in the red zone, it seems like. So now first and 10 for Dylan Burke on the 15-yard line in the red zone with trips to the left. He motions. And goes up the middle to Siez. He breaks a tackle and cuts outside. And he gets a couple of yards, but is immediately stuffed by number 62, Justin Lewis. Great shiftiness by Siez there, making something out of nothing on that play. But again, I want to go back to that sportsmanlike conduct penalty. It's just you can't let people get into your head this early into a game, and then they're just going to use that against you the whole game. you got to stay calm, stay relaxed if you want to be in this football game and win it. Yeah, I mean, I get it. It's tough, especially if you're on special teams and you're, you're barely getting on the field, and then when you are on the field, you want to give it your all. So now second and seven, Burke motions and pitches it outside to Siez, and he breaks a tackle. Some good runs today from Siez as he gets the first down to make it first and goal inside the five for Rodriguez. They're going hurry up here. I think yeah, they might run this all one all the way in. Yeah, looks like it. That's usually how they have started games lately. As CS gets it up the middle, and he's going to walk right in after breaking a tackle. Touchdown, Monciano Siez. 
with the rushing touchdown, his first of the year on the ground. And Rodriguez goes up six to nothing here. Start this game with just under six minutes to go here in the first quarter. Great blocking by Rodriguez up there. Gave him a big hole. I mean, I could fit a truck through that hole if I really wanted to. Just automatic touchdown as soon as that line opened that up. Yeah, I mean, it, it really looked effortless right there. I'm, if I'm Rodriguez and King, I'm definitely spamming the run tonight. Yeah, I mean, the, zo the zone blocking there up the middle was perfect from Rodriguez, and it looks like they're going to go for two here with Burke goes under center, trying to make it an 8 nothing game, but there's a flag thrown right when the ball is snapped. Looks like it's going to be offsides on Bethel, Great. so Rodriguez will be even closer. Great hard count by Burke there, really selling the hut, getting them to draw offsides, and it's just, it works, gets them a yard closer. I mean, that's so important if you're a quarterback, you know, having that cadence to get teams to jump off sides, especially in these kind of situations. And in the backfield, in the I formation, is number 24, Jordan Woods. And he gets a toss to the left, but he fumbles it. And it's picked up by Bethel. So the conversion will be no good. Keeping the score at six to nothing, Rodriguez. Just poor execution right there for Rodriguez. Rarely see that happen. Miles King's probably going to get on them about that one. As you know, he really likes to keep it sharp and just make sure everything's good around here. I mean, that w I mean, that wasn't a bad pitch from uh, Burke. It just went right through Jordan Woods' hands. And if you're on the goal line like that, you're not going to recover from that at all. So now Rodriguez will kick off after the great field position and scoring, taking advantage of it. Very curious to see what the play calling is here for Bethel now. I mean, they went three and out just off of runs. We'll see if they, you know, try to start with a play action pass maybe or something creative. Yeah, I mean, they are barely versatile as well. They are all inside zone runs to the running back. One of them was a counter run from the backfield, but that's easy to read if you've seen two inside zone plays. I would like to see them get some short passes to get McNeil in rhythm. Make sure he gets that rhythm and timing down, then maybe open it up downfield later. So now kicking off for Rodriguez, number four, Monciano Ciaz, the man who scored the touchdown for Rodriguez. And he squibs it right up the middle. Oh, and it ki kicks onto her foot of a Bethel player. And now that's a dog pile for the ball at about the 35-yard line. We do not know who came up with that as it was bobbled on the ground by a Bethel player. Looks like it will be... Jaguar ball, but that's a close one if you're yeah. Bethel. Early whistle there from the ref. Yeah. Ball is still on the ground, blowing the whistle. Maybe some players got confused by that, let up off the gas a little bit. So now first and 10 for Bethel from the 35 yard line. Not bad field position for McNeil compared to how his last drive started. Oh, it's Rodriguez's ball. Oh, so. so Ref is signaling timeout Bethel. So the chains were going towards Bethel's way as the, the sideline ref here on Bethel's sideline was calling for the chains to come over and extend the other way. Yeah, that's a missed opportunity for Bethel there. You cannot allow that in a game you're already down one possession. And now Rodriguez is starting great field position again. Well, it all started with that squib kick. That squib kick kicked off of one of their players' hands, just allowing a ball in the open field. No one else on Bethel could recover from that, causing Rodriguez to get the fumble. Yeah, I mean, if you think about CS has been everything Rodriguez has wanted this game. I mean, he has a perfect squib kick, squib kick up the middle to get them the ball back after scoring a touchdown on the drive he mainly contributed to. So now first and 10 for Rodriguez on the 35 yard line. And it's a handoff up the middle. I believe that was to Ciaz. They're just leaning on that run game as a penalty comes out. Might be unsportsmanlike as there was 
Little shoving after the play was over. But like I was saying, they're just going to lean on that run game for these first few drives. Diaz has been mm -hmm. running the ball great these first few drives, and I wouldn't imagine they would stop going to him. I, I know they like to do a bit of motion with Samuel Hall. I wouldn't be surprised if he gets a little jet run. Yeah, I mean, they've showed him in the motion yeah. from the slot. Samuel Hall gets jet sweeps <laughs> often, and he had a play today where he – motioned on the last drive and then it ended up going to Ciez. So that's all all part of what Miles King wants to do. He wants to show you a bunch of different looks in one play and then run at all the looks in the game. And the penalty looked to be unsportsmanlike conduct on Rodriguez. So now that backs them up 15 yards repeating first down. So now first and it was from the spot of the foul so first and 22 for the Mustangs. Sia's in the backfield with Burke. He drops back to pass, looks to the right, and he throws a dart over the middle, and that's caught by Jamar Missouri. And he was down. Great zip on that throw by Burke. I mean, just fit into a tight window, diving catch by Missouri. So now they will hurry the offense up here for second and 11. <laughs> Burke drops out to Paxton, throws a screen to Jermaine, Missouri. We know they like to do that, and a flag is thrown after a block is made by Samuel Hall after a good yardage by Jermaine, Missouri. They might get a block on Hall here. He might have had too much tug on that jersey. And like you said, Drew, a lot of Flags being thrown here in this first quarter. Oh. Yeah, looks like you're right, Robert. Looks like it was on Samuel Hall. I mean, uh, as a receiver on that play, you just got to be able to make sure you keep him in front of you, your defender, and make sure he can't get outside your shoulders because that's what leads to you tugging on the jersey, causing a holding penalty, bringing back a nice play by Missouri. And you know, Miles King will let his players know about these penalties, keeping them disciplined for next week as they do play Vanden in a huge game here at Rodriguez High School. So now Dylan Burke in the shotgun, brings Highball in motion, drops back and throws a screen to Jermaine Missouri again, and he's running across the field, hurls a man! Oh my goodness, give this man anything he wants! Oh my goodness, what a point by Jermaine Missouri, going up and over the defender, I mean, get this man in the Olympic hurdles after that. Yeah, I mean, this kid is nuts. He's, <laughs> it's, it's like he's got the sliders on zero, like he's playing Madden on rookie. Whatever you want to call it, it's clear he's in a league amongst himself. I mean, for a guy teams. that's 6'5", hurdling a player like that in-game. The play is coming back the again. The play is coming another back. Penalty. Another penalty is called on Rodriguez. But I wouldn't be surprised if Jermaine Missouri puts that on his huddle highlight. <laughs> I mean, the ref's got to lay off a little bit here, right? So now third and 30 for Rodriguez. So now they have two drives where they're set back very far due to penalties. Burke drops back to pass, looks to his right. He steps with the pocket, rolls out to his right, and dumps it off to Monciano Ciaz. He breaks a tackle and gets down to about the 35 yard line. I mean, they're just consistently having big play after big play trying to get this first down. We'll see what they do here on fourth down, I believe. And they will go for it. It is now fourth and 10 after the 20 yard gain in the hurry up offense. Burke drops back to pass, has a blitz to his right and he gets it off just in time to Jermaine Missouri, but it's overthrown, but there is a flag thrown. Looks like it will be pass interference on Bethel. That'll be an automatic first down. That is not what you want on a fourth down play if you're Bethel. I mean, if you're Cameron Usher there getting beat on that coverage, you, after seeing the ball was way over Missouri's head, you cannot shove him in the back there. Ref's going to call that any time. Yeah, and I think it's a shame because going back to that, uh, third down, he was one-on-one -on -one coverage with Missouri, and he actually did a decent job. So, just hurts at how to get that flag on the second time around. 
And credit to Burke there, he got the ball out just in the nick of time as he had a blitzer coming from his right side. I mean, as we've seen in his growth, he isn't afraid of this pressure anymore. He's getting the ball out and making it an accurate throw each and every time. So now first and 10 after the pass interference. Burke takes it from the shotgun and runs it up the middle and he's brought down by big number 70, Chase Toa, one of the captains for Bethel. I mean, if you're Dylan Burke, QB draw there, just scary feeling getting tackled by such a big guy in Toa. So now second and six after the four yard run from Burke. He's got Mer Jermaine Missouri one on one to the left. Runs up the middle though with Ciaz and he cuts it outside and he Ooh. drops the ball. But I believe he jumped on it as he dropped it. And there is an injured player down on the field. I believe that is. Cornelius Chenevert, but he does get up on his own power and comes off the field for hopefully just a couple of plays. Yeah, and I believe he was a tackle to get that sack in the second drive for the Rodriguez Mustang, so that's that's a big loss for Bethel defense. And this Rodriguez team just feels like they're not playing as disciplined as they have the past three weeks. So now after the four-yard run, and near fumble loss by Ciaz. He's now third and two for Rodriguez. They have trips to the right side. Burke in the shotgun with Jordan Woods back to protect him. He drops back and throws it to the end zone and it is caught by Jermaine Missouri. And they're gonna call it incomplete as he dropped it as he was going down to the ground, saying he did not have full control of it. It looks like he did not survive the ground on that play. So close to coming up with another touchdown. Would have been his eighth on the year. Just Miles King's going to get on this team about being disciplined and thinking what you got to do through these plays. So now fourth and two for Rodriguez. They're going to go for it inside their own 20-yard line. I like the idea. Or inside Bethel's 20-yard line, excuse me. Sia's in the backfield. And they're just gonna hand it up off the middle. Oh, and Burke takes it himself. He's got a lot of room to run, and he gets it to the end zone for a rushing touchdown. I mean, how exciting is Dylan Burke? What an athlete he is. Just get the ball in his hands, makes an explosive play, juke into the right, had wide open field, was gonna pick up that first down. Amazing juke to get that touchdown. Yeah, I mean, so far early into the season, we, he hasn't really had to rely on his legs as he's had so much a great plays through the air, but right there he just shows that he is a dual threat. Just not a lot you could do guarding him. And that is his second rushing touchdown on the season as the Mustangs take the lead 12 to nothing. They are going for two once again in the I formation. They do the same toss play to Jordan Woods. This time he catches it and gets in for two, making it a 14 to nothing Rodriguez lead. And I think that's just a great play call by Miles King as they've been showing the inside run to see us. This whole the whole game so far, and then to show the read option off of it and let Burke keep it, beautiful play calling. I love the fact they went back to the pitch on the two point conversion again after the first time not getting it, second time around getting it makes your team feel a lot better about themselves that they've made up for that mistake earlier. And it shows that Miles King also trusts his players as well to not make the same mistake twice, as it was Jordan Woods who initially dropped the, the pitch on the first two-point conversion and then got the pitch on this play and got the conversion. So now Rodriguez will kick off to Bethel. And we've seen only three plays of offense from Bethel and we're just over two minutes to go here in the first quarter. So not the start you want if you're the Jaguars. Siez is kicking off. Once again for Rodriguez. Had the successful squib kick his last time. This Bethel squad needs some energy. They need an explosive play, get the team going. He squibs out the middle once again, this time a little shorter, and it bounces off his helmet. We'll see who ends up with that. Looks like Bethel did recover the ball. 
Yeah, I mean, first two squib kicks, you're bobbling it back-to-back -back times. Rodriguez is going to start doing this all game now. You know, why wouldn't they? I mean, if it works, keep going to it, right? Get more chances on offense. That's all you want. Get, keep getting chances on offense. Make Run up the score. And, I mean, we've seen Rodriguez do this before in the past games that we've, we've seen. Bethel's got to be ready for anything when it comes to the special teams. It's not just offense and defense. Special teams plays a huge factor in these games. As we've seen, it's given Rodriguez a 14 to nothing lead to start the game. And now they do recover the onside kick from Rodriguez, so they will have first and 10 on the 42 yard line. Yeah, it looks like number 50, Chenevert's back in the game, so good to see his injury wasn't too bad. McNeil keeps it, QB sweep to the right side, and he cuts up the middle and gets a few yards. I think we might see this a lot more from Bethel. Rely on the athlete, McNeil. He's just, both these quarterbacks so good at running with the football in their hands. So after the five yard run from McNeil, it's now second five for Bethel near midfield. And they do have good field position to start this drive. We'll see if they can do something with it. Sam McNeil in the shotgun with two wide receivers out to or three wide receivers. He motions one over and he keeps it to the left side. QB sweep again. And he gets stuffed by Monciano Ciaz in the backfield. I mean, what an athlete Ciaz is. He's everywhere. He's kicking the ball off. He's scoring rushing touchdowns. He's making tackles. What more could you like from Ciaz here? So a three-yard loss on that run from McNeil, making it third and eight for Bethel. Yeah, they ran last time. It was third and eight. Wasn't able to convert the first down. We'll see if they learn from their mistakes or if they want to run it back. I'd like to see a pass here. I know they might not lean heavily into the pass game, but you got to see what McNeil has here. Yeah, I agree. I mean, I'm looking at Rodriguez's defense. I see one up top safety. <laughs> they know the run is coming. They're waiting for it. And it's man-to-man -man by Rod, so maybe one of these receivers can get loose down the field. So third and eight here for Bethel. Bring a man in motion. He does drop back to pass. McNeil throws it, and it just misses him. That was targeted for number six, Anthony Young, the junior. I mean, tight spiral by McNeil. Great throw. The receiver just never turned his head around to look for the football. Football landed right in front of him, never turned his head back. Yeah, I mean, first pass of the game for McNeil. It, of course, it wasn't a completion, but I like what I saw there. And I believe if McNeil just airs that out a little bit more, I mean, that lets uh, Anti Young get under it and possibly make a play on it as it was a go route from the, the slot. It's now punting here, it's very high up. It looks like it was tipped again, that time by number two, Marcy Ciaz, the brother of Monciano Ciaz. Now it'll be downed. Bad snap there on that play, causing the punter to have a little bit more panic, trying to get that ball off, and just barely got tipped. I look for this Bethel defense to make a strong push here, though. You want to keep your team in this game. It's 14 nothing. You don't want to let the score get more out of hand here. I mean, I expect Rodriguez to honestly just run the ball a lot more, giving us how – actually, no, they're passing the first play of, this, of the drive, giving it to Jamar Missouri. He breaks a tackle on the outside. He's shoved out of bounds. And so far, those hitch and curl routes have been working so far to Jamar Missouri. And Burke's going to tell him to hurry up and get on the ball as they are doing hurry up offense. Won't get it off. And they will not get it off as the first quarter ends with Rodriguez being up 14 to nothing. And Bethel, two drives, two three and outs. I mean, they got to get their offense going to get back in this game. Yeah, I mean, I, I, again, I would, I, I get that you got to do the run. 
and, and it just hasn't been working so far. So you got to come up with another alternative. What can you do to push the ball, to push the chains forward? I, again, like I know earlier, I did say they got to be aggressive with the passing game. I still believe in that. I do like McNeil's throw. Again, it could have been better. It could have been completed. But I still like what I saw. Why not trust your QB a little bit more? It would give them more confidence if they yeah. did. It would just take a little bit more pressure off everyone's chest if they got a few completions with that pass game. And Rodriguez, I mean, they're just playing a good football game. They could be a little bit better. All those penalties, they will clean up, hopefully, here in this second quarter. Yeah, I do think that's a good point. They definitely got to be more disciplined. A, a lot of those flags did hold them back. They could add another touchdown right now if it wasn't for a couple of those flags. Yeah, I mean, they've had two third and 30 situations mm -hmm. just because of penalties. So that's the only reason why Bethel may still be in this game. And it's because of Rodriguez beating themselves. So now to start the second quarter, we do flip sides on the field. So now Rodriguez will have the ball on the 45 yard line. They bring Hall in motion and they give it to him on a jet sweep. He's gonna get outside, got some running room. And he breaks a tackle. He gets downfield for a very solid gain. Great run there from Samuel Hall. Yeah, that's a great move to make that first defender miss right there and gain those first extra couple yards. And like what I saw there. Let's give the receivers credit on that play. Getting the blocks downfield, making Hall have more space to work with, and getting great gain on first down to make it first and 10 again. I mean, that's a 20-yard gain from Samuel Hall. Burke. Hands it off to Marcy Ciaz, but there's a flag right when the ball is snapped. Could be offsides, could be false start. We'll see. Yeah, Bethel is lucky that whistle got blown. That looked like it would have been a pretty big game. And the penalty is on Bethel. I believe they had too many players on the field. So that's just a five yard penalty. First and five now for Rodriguez. Marcy Cia is still in the backfield with Burke. And they fake the run. He throws it up in the end zone. And that's, catch that? That's caught by Jermaine Missouri, but they say he was out of bounds. They're edging him right now. I mean, this is, if you're Jermaine Missouri, you gotta hate this. You gotta be so frustrated if you're Missouri. You're having two spectacular plays. Three, actually, he had that hurdle called back earlier in the game, too. Two touchdowns called back. Just not going his way tonight. So now second and five here for Rodriguez after the incomplete pass in the end zone intended for Jermaine Missouri. Burke in the backfield with Marcy Ciaz. Hands it off up the middle to him, and he's met by Damani Jackson right in the backfield. That's a great defensive play there from the linebacker. He was assisted by number 41, James Cardwell, the D end and outside linebacker for Bethel. I mean, just great push by Bethel there. They got into the backfield, just like as you see Rodriguez does. But Bethel, if they continue to do that, they can get this run game to slow down for Rodriguez. They have a shot. Yeah, I mean, I think it's important to get, get the stops in the run game because then it's almost like you know they're going to pass. And if you can predict the pass, you just got to know your cor corners are going to hold up and you'll be good. A little confusion on the down there by the refs. So it is third down now for Rodriguez. Third and eight after the negative play. And it's a play action to Ciaz. Burke drops back and throws deep into the end zone again. And that's going to be another flag thrown as Jermaine Missouri was the target in the end zone once again. These Bethel corners, man, they just keep shoving him to the ground as soon as the ball is coming his way. He turns his head, looks back for it, gets shoved to the ground. Got to be frustrating if you're Missouri, but also good. You're getting the penalty drawn, moving the ball up. Yeah, I mean, it, it's so tough to guard a guy with Jermaine Missouri's talent. I mean, all you can really do is interference. So now they will move the ball up. 
And that will be a first down. So another critical pass interference. This time on third down instead of fourth down, but still crucial for Bethel. So now first and 10 on the 11 yard line for Rodriguez. Berg drops back and throws it. Oh my gosh, Jamar Missouri was on an island by himself. Touchdown Rodriguez. There was no one lined up on him and Berg saw it and just throws it right to him. I mean, that's just horrible communication for Bethel. He cannot allow that. And one of the Missouri brothers wide open? You're gonna leave one of the Missouri brothers wide open. I don't know. Insanity. I mean, Jamal or Jamar Missouri, my apologies, had to be like so excited he was wide <laughs> open on that play for a free walk-in <laughs> touchdown. And he's gotten the bulk of the catches here in today's game that have counted. And Rodriguez will go for two. Pitch to the left. This time to Marcy Sias, and he's just going to walk in. Conversion is good. So now after the two-point conversion and the touchdown to the wide open, Jamar Missouri, Rodriguez leads a commanding 22-0 lead. I mean, I don't know how Jamar doesn't fall start on that play in pure excitement. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, that's something I'd see in, when I was playing elementary football at recess. Uh, you can't do that in high school football, you know? Just sneakily get open. No one knows you're there. And I believe that was meant to be a run play, but Burke checked out of it because Marcy Sias lo looked like he was ready to take the handoff, and Burke just turned his hips and threw it right to Jamar Missouri. I mean, that's a beautiful awareness there from Burke. I mean, his IQ on football over this past year has just been so much better. He's aware of what they're doing at the line, checking out of things, checking into other things. Just great, smart play by Bird. I mean, like you said, Robert, smooth operator. Might be the perfect term for him so far this season. Now has 13 passing touchdowns on the year, 15 total through the first four games. You think that'll be his nickname from now on, Smooth Operator? I mean, if he's if they end up seeing it, and we and they see us say it, I hope he claims it. Onside kick here once again from Ciaz, and it goes over the head of a Bethel player, and they looks like Bethel did land on it. Hard to tell. I mean, if you're this Bethel team, you got to be aware it's coming at this point. They've done it on every kickoff, and they keep putting their hands on the ball when they don't have a chance at it. They keep tipping it, making it bounce in different directions so other players can't jump on top of it quicker. Yeah, I mean, you just got to have a better hands team than that. They've gotten a chance to catch them, but it just goes over their head, and bo they bobble in there. I mean, great kicks overall from Ciaz here in today's game. Pure athlete, Ciaz is. So now first and 10 here for Bethel. Looking to get a f their first first down of the game. Ball is on the tw their own 27 yard line. And this Rodriguez defense will not let up. In man coverage, they, they motion a receiver. They hand the ball off and he cuts outside but he is met by the man who scored the touchdown, Jamar Missouri, drags him out of bounds. This Rodriguez team just continues to swarm to the football. I mean, they have no let up. King makes sure they have all the energy throughout the game. Even if it's a blowout, they still want them playing with high energy because fundamentals are key in this game. And that was a tough run there by Cameron Usher. Cutting that outside after he didn't have a hole up the middle. And a loss of five yards. It's now second and 15 for the Jaguars. McNeil still in the shotgun with trips to the left and a bunch formation the receivers are. And Jermaine Missouri with guarding a solo receiver on the far side of the field. McNeil drops back to pass, rolls out to his right and is immediately pressured and he just has to get rid of it. I don't even know if that got back to the line of scrimmage. Looks like the refs are going to talk this one over. And they are going to throw the flag. Looks like it will be on McNeil. I mean, he has no other choice there but to get rid of the intentional grounding or not. The O-line just didn't give him a shot. Yeah, I mean, Rodriguez brought the blitz. He was initially pressured by number 58, Dominic Valentine, the sophomore, making a play for the Rodriguez defense. 
So after the intentional grounding penalty, that'll back Bethel up even more after the negative play. Yeah, this drive is shaping up to look like some great field position for Rodriguez yet again. Yeah, I mean, seeing how, how the punts have been going for Bethel, mm -hmm. if they don't get a first down here, they're going to have to punt again. And those haven't been going well. Well, it's just the amount of pressure they get on those punts from Rodriguez. The punter has no time back there, it feels like. So now the down does advance on intentional grounding penalty, so it is third and 27. The ball's on the five yard line. Yeah. I mean, if you're Bethel, just don't have a negative play. Yeah, I, I really not a lot they could do here. I, a go round maybe? Rodriguez did force a safety last week. We'll see what McNeil and the Bethel offense can do here on third and very long. He is in the shotgun, drops back to pass. And he just throws a go route, like you said, Drew, and it's over the head of everyone. Even the farthest safety, Marcy Ciaz, went over his head as well. And that'll bring up fourth and 27 from the five-yard line. Yeah, I mean, of course, the completion there would have been nice for Bethel, but even if it was intercepted, I'm sure Bethel would take that. I'd, I'd prefer that than a punt at, what, the five-yard line? That was basically a third down punt if you didn't complete the play. If it's intercepted, better field position. But we'll see what type of pressure Rodriguez can force right here. Will they block it, get a touchdown maybe? Or will Bethel actually get it off and get a good punt off this time? Yeah, I mean, seeing as the pressure that Rodriguez has given them all game long, not just on special teams, but when McNeil is dropping back to pass, no time to throw. Punter drops back to punt, no time to punt. It's been rough going here for the Jaguars as they are down 22 to nothing with just over nine minutes to go here in the second quarter. And Bethel has to bring an extra gunner on the field as they only had 10 players on. There's just been a lot of miscommunication here for Bethel in this game as well. And he just, oh, and he gets hit as he's punting it. And they will throw the flag for it. That's not what you want to do if you're Rodriguez. It'll it's depend on the penalty. Roughing the kicker will be a bad penalty right here if you're Rodriguez. And the punt did get get to about where they started the drive. But we'll see based on the penalty how the, the, this shapes up. And we were just talking about the pressure from Rodriguez is unrelenting. They have no let up. I mean, foot's on the gas. They give it 110% every snap, every play. And that's what you love to see if you're Miles King. So now they are just determining the spot of where the ball will be punted once again. As that will move Bethel up, giving them some more breathing room. I mean, this Bethel line just got to contain here, get a good punt off. So now the ball moves up five yards onto the 10. Hunting 10 yards away, right on the goal line, and it's blocked. That was by number nine, Liam Flores, and it still gets past the line of scrimmage, though. I mean, we've just seen it all game. Rodriguez has no let up, no mercy. They just want to attack this opponent. So that will be first and 10 for Rodriguez after the tipped punt. And they're starting in the red zone once again, right on the 20-yard line in Bethel territory. And Burks in the shotgun with Monciano Ciez back with him. And in at tight end is number 44, Carlos Delayo the third. And we still have nine minutes to go here in the quarter. Just this one's looking like it's going to be a bloodbath. Not a lot Bethel has been able to do. Offensively and on special teams, obviously not recovering 
an onside kick. I will give the defense their credit. They've been having some good drives against this Rodriguez offense. Burke drops back to pass and throws a dart over the middle to Jermaine Missouri. He finally gets his touchdown. Third time's the charm. And that is his eighth touchdown of the year. Beautiful throw there from Burke to Jermaine Missouri to put Rodriguez up once again. You just gotta feel great there if you're Jermaine Missouri after having those first two not go your way. The third time you get it to go your way must feel so good to be him right now. Yeah, I mean, another game added on to his touchdown streak. I'm very excited to see how long this streak lasts for us. So they will go for two again in that I formation and do a zone run to the left with Monciano Ciaz, and he's hit before he gets to the goal line, but drives himself in, and the conversion is good, putting Rodriguez up 30 to nothing with just under nine minutes to go in the second quarter. I mean, this is what we've seen the first two games from Rodriguez. Last week they had a closer game than everyone expected, only winning by 12 points, but other than that, the first two games, pure domination from this Rodriguez football team like we've known to expect now. And that is now Dylan Burke's 14th passing touchdown through the first four games. I mean, if you want to talk about efficiency, that's no interceptions as well. Might be the most efficient quarterback in the league right now going into league play. He's looking to put up a historic touchdown to interception ratio this year. We'll see why when it comes to league play, but right now, just killing the competition. Yeah, I don't know. Holden, do you know what like the average is for touchdowns in a season for quarterbacks for high school? For high school, it's it just depends on the scheme, but an average, I would say, if you're a passing team, would be about 20. And he's close to that mark yeah. through four games. And Monciano Ciaz kicks another onside kick, and Bethel players run to each other, but they do recover and are able to return it. And they don't get very far as number 33. Don't have him on the Rodriguez roster, but he made a good play. These fans for Rodriguez chanting scoreboard must feel bad if you're Bethel there. It like is, salt in the wound. It is a neon night for Rodriguez. I hear that chant about every Friday coming here now. <laughs> this Rodriguez team is dominant. I mean, they have a real chance to win league this year, I believe. I think so, too. With how good their team has improved over the last few years and seeing how they're starting the season this year, you know, ki killing Fremont, mm -hmm. beating Fairfield by 30-plus and not letting them score at all, and not beating Armio by multiple touchdowns. It's just pure domination from the squad, week in, week out. It's just what we expect now. So now first and 10 for Bethel after Rodriguez took a commanding lead on that last drive. If you're Bethel, you just want anything to go your way right now. And they throw a screen pass on the outside and that's complete to number t number four, Micah Broussard it looked like. Yeah, that's a good way to start this drive. I'm very excited to see uh, some diversity in this play calling. We'll see if they go back to it. I mean, this is what we've been saying to do since the start of the football game. Yeah. Allow McCain to get into some rhythm and hopefully, or excuse me, McNeil to get into some rhythm. And excuse me, that was complete to number eight, Dennis Walton the third, a junior. And that only gained about two yards, so now second and eight for the Jaguars after the screen pass from McNeil. And he is in the shotgun. In the backfield with him, number 24, Melvin Miller the third. Motions Jackson out to the right, he hands off the middle to Miller, and he gets a couple yards just bursting his way to the, looks like the tiniest hole a running back can get through. And that'll bring up another third down for Bethel. Have not converted yet so far in this game. I'm interested to see what they go here on, what would it be, third and short here? Yeah, that, it was about a four yard run, so now third and four here for Bethel. They do have the option to run it, as we know they ran it on a third and eight. Mm -hmm. Maybe a quarterback keeper here of some kind. 
So now McNeil in the shotgun. And that is Miller the third back there with him. He gets the ball, and he's met immediately by Paula Amu. I mean, he's a game wrecker, man. This is like what we've seen versus that Fremont squad where Rodriguez didn't allow a first down in the first half. Yeah, I don't know if the run to the right was the play there. I've I seen like three Rodriguez helmets on that right side. They were just waiting for it. And they exactly what they wanted. And running right into Paula Amu is just, mm -hmm. he's a pure dominant player these past two games. Getting nine tackles on one and 11 in another, it's just other domination from him. And I mean, he's only a junior, so like you can only think of the capabilities he has over these next two years with this team. Along with Jermaine Missouri being a junior. But they will be going for it here on fourth and seven. McNeil drops back to pass and throws to the grass. Just miscommunication there from Bethel. Looks like number six, Anthony Young, was just running a pure go route and that went for an out route. I don't know if Young didn't understand the play call or what happened there. Yeah, I mean, definitely some miscommunication there as McNeil threw that right away to absolutely nothing. So now Rodriguez takes over after the failed fourth down play from Bethel. I mean, and they could make it a mercy rule here scoring on this drive. Yeah, just nine yards away from the red zone. So Highball gets the jet sweep and gets some good blocking there from Monsignor Cias and he gets outside and fumbles the ball out of bounds after a nice run from Keelan Highball. I mean, even when it looks like the play's about to finish, somehow this Rodriguez squad just finds another gear to get more yards. Yeah, I mean, we've seen what Keelan Highball can do when, when he's running with the ball in his hands in open field. So now first and 10 for Rodriguez. They hand it off up the middle to, I believe that was Monciano Ciez. Got in the bulk of the carries today. Does have a touchdown. I mean, do you throw it one-on-one -on -one up top to Jermaine Missouri? They definitely could. S second and seven. Berg drops back after a play action, and he was looking for the tight end. Number 44, Carlos Dayala the third, and he just missed him. I believe Burke is just used to the speed of Jermaine and Jamar Missouri. And the height. And the height. <laughs> You're definitely right about that, Drew. I like to see Rodriguez, though. They're getting more players involved, making everyone feel good about themselves. Mm -hmm. Yeah, normally we see Monciano Ciaz in that tight end position, but he's been getting the bulk of the carries at running back today. And Diallo the third's been at tight end. So now third down, Berg, play action pass, throws it up to Jamar Missouri oh. and makes a beautiful catch. Stick it to his fingers. That's another touchdown for Jamar Missouri. That's nasty. That's just a nasty catch. Beautiful. I don't know what to say. I mean, it's like he's got to stick him on those hands or something with how he just hauled that ball in in the back of the end zone. I mean, call him Spider-Man the way he's catching these balls today. So now that gives Rodriguez a 36 to nothing lead. And I believe that will start the mercy rule after halftime. I mean, we saw this in the Fremont game, first game of the season. They showed off what they could do, mainly Jermaine, Missouri. And they go for two up the middle, handing it off oh. to the fullback. Number six, Malachi Roten, the D tackle, gets in there. I love the fake pitch there. You saw Burke sell it really well, handing it off to the fullback, flailing his arms in the air, making it seem like he pitched the ball. I mean, those are just the little things you do as a quarterback on the field. Not only are you just throwing the ball and commanding the offense, you got to show the fakes you know, manipulate the defense, and he's been doing it so well in the play action game all season long. And there he does the fake pitch to perfection, he, getting it to Roten for the two-point conversion. He's like Aaron Rodgers out here with all these fakes, touchdown to interception ratio. You might might be seeing him have a good I college career. I wouldn't start those comparisons yet. That's until, high praise. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't start it yet until we see what he does on a free play. Yeah, we got to get him on those cadence plays. 
So now, after the two-point conversion, Rodriguez takes takes a commanding 38 to nothing lead with just under five minutes to go here in the second quarter. I mean, this has gotten ugly fast. And Monciano Ciaz is kicking off. And it's another little squib onside kick, and it goes over the head of a Bethel player once again. But it is recovered by number six, Anthony Young, the junior, as he was there behind the main line for the Jaguars. These Bethel players, they're playing a dangerous game trying to get up and catch that. I mean, you need a 30-inch vert to catch that one. Yeah, I mean, it's just beautiful kicking from Monciano Cias. I it mean, is. and I, if you look, the way he sets up the ball on the tee, he doesn't have it as a traditional tall football. He's got it sideways on the tee, and he just kind of kicks the bottom of it, and it gets a good bounce from it. It makes for some funky bounces. Players don't know how to read a football coming off a tee like that usually. I mean, hey, that's what you want as a kicker doing onside kicks. So now first and ten for Bethel, trying to get another first down or trying to get another first and 10 on this drive as they have yet to get a first down this game. McNeil in the shotgun. Motion and it's a toss up the middle. Going on the outside is number six, Anthony Young. There was a whistle blue. Or blown, excuse me. Looks like the play will count. Yeah, the play is going to count, and he was tackling the backfield, so a loss of about six on the play for Bethel. I mean, just too indecisive there on that go-around. Just got the ball in his hands. He looked like he had a block from the old lineman cutting up the middle, and he just decided not to take it. Yeah, I mean, that's exactly what happened on the first play of the last drive. They had a negative play. It's sending them back in their own territory, which is not what you want as an offense. So now McNeil in the shotgun, second and 18. He drops back to pass, looks to his right, and throws a dart. And that's complete to number six, Anthony Young. But he doesn't get much yardage after the catch as Rodriguez once again swarming the ball. Well, if you're young on that play, you can't go backwards after catching the ball. You got to go forwards. You're not going to make a man miss on this Rodriguez defense with how well they are coached. Yeah, I mean, oh, just the overall skill set of this whole defense as well. From the Missouri brothers in that corner, Monciano Ciaz, that safety with his brother, Marcy Ciaz, in the D-line as well, has just been so dominant all year long. Not much you can do. So now third and 21 after Anthony Young went backwards after catching the pass from McNeil. McNeil drops back to pass. He throws over the middle and it's intercepted. Oh my goodness. What an interception by Jermaine Missouri. And he tosses it back to Marcy Ciaz. And he's going to get yards. He might go all the way. Oh, my, oh my goodness. What a high IQ play there from Jermaine, Missouri. But there is a flag down, so I don't believe the touchdown is going to count. But the turnover will. I mean, despite the penalty, that's a, an amazing play from Rodriguez. I mean, how exciting. You just so rare to see a throwback as you're being tackled. And then Ciaz making the moves to get to the end zone I mean insanity yeah I, I mean that play really just sums up this whole entire game a great move by one of the Missouri brothers as you can see Jamar is now gritting in the middle of the field <laughs> surprised there wasn't a penalty for unsportsmanlike conduct so now after the interception Rodriguez will take over with just under three minutes to go here in the second quarter. I mean, so many exciting plays called back in this first half for Rodriguez. Yeah. I mean, I, about, I think that's about the only thing Miles King will have to say to them negatively about this game so far. And timeout Bethel.
believe that is the second timeout they've used here in the first half, so they have one remaining. I mean, that was an insane interception as well by by Jermaine Missouri. As that was a dart over the middle by McNeil, I thought it was going to be completed, or at least. And let's not overlook the blocks that were set on that play. Running it back, Missouri pitches it back. The blocks got set up beautifully, just wide open space to get to the end zone. Sadly, called back, but still amazing to watch. Yeah, I, don't, I feel like we talk about Jermaine Missouri's offense all the time. We don't talk about his defense ever. I feel like a lot of QBs don't throw his way, and that's probably smart, but when they do, you see what happens. I mean, you see on offense how good of hands he has. Yeah. Why would you want to throw his <laughs> way? Both these Missouri and, brothers. I mean, not only did he intercept that beautifully, but that was blanket coverage. It's like he on ran a the dig route for him. Yes, exactly. That's a perfect way to put it, Robert. So now first and ten here for Rodriguez as they have the lead 38 to nothing here. In the backfield with Dylan Burke is Keelan Highbaugh. And it's a play action to him. Throw over the middle. Caught by Montiel Cias. He's running down the field. He's trying to get his second touchdown of the game, and he does! Fighting his way into the end zone. Once again, another touchdown for Montiel Cias and Dylan Burke. I mean, what effort by Cias. He's getting wrapped up near the goal line, and he's just fighting for that touchdown there. This Rodriguez team might get the 70 tonight. I don't know. <laughs> I know they're going to have quick time in the second half, mercy rule, but, I mean, it's easy money. Whatever Rodriguez wants, they're getting it. It feels like an explosive play every time they touch the ball. So now Rodriguez is going for two in the I formation once again. Zone play up to the outside to Marcy Cias, and he's just going to walk in, making a defender miss. Rodriguez offense just too fast for this Bethel defense. Yeah, I mean, the speed, the strength, that everything is on another level for Rodriguez tonight. And I want to give credit to Dylan Burke on that touchdown pass. That play action fake was beautiful. I mean, he sold out very, very good. It was just a pop pass over the middle to Monciano Cies. And you just let him do all the work after that. I mean, it's just a credit to his development over this past offseason. Working on it, getting better, and it, it's paying off here today. Certainly a guy to circle when you're watching tape on this Rodriguez team if you're Vanden. I'd like to see what they do next week versus this Rodriguez team. Yeah, that will definitely be an interesting game as the, is the first league game of the season for Rodriguez. Intensity is going to be very high. And with the realignment of a couple teams in the Monticello Empire League, it'll be interesting to see how it all shapes out, adding sack high and obviously keeping the, the top three teams last season, Rodriguez, Vanden, and Vaca High. So now the man who scored the touchdown, Monsignor Ciez, is kicking the ball, looking to do another onside kick, it looks like, based on how the ball is placed on the tee. And I mean, the onside kicks for him have been beautiful today. Perf it perfect, it seems like. Kicking from the 40 yard line, it goes a little far toward the returners. That's number six, Anthony Young, and he's tackled immediately, but there is a flag thrown. I think it's going to be a face mask penalty. Reach really high, wrapped around the helmet. Probably going to be a face mask called here. And again, that's about the only thing negative we can say about Rodriguez tonight is the penalties called against them. The refs seem to be done talking it over here. And if you're Bethel here, you just want to get a first down and to end the half strong with Ooh. two and a half minutes to go. Looks like unsportsmanlike conduct was called on Bethel here. I thought it was a face mask with how high up the tackle was. So now they will start the ball, or start with the ball, excuse me, 
even farther back into their own territory. I mean, every time Rodriguez starts with the ball, they're past the 50-yard line, almost in the red zone or in the red zone. going to be hard to get yardage today for this Rodriguez team, but touchdowns will be a lot. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, with how high-powered this offense has been, Burke's only averaging about 200 yards per game through the air. But, and that, that would be about almost an average for a high-passing volume team. But that's just because they get the ball in such good field position every time. Mm -hmm. You got to credit the defense for that one. Just making stop after stop. So now first and 10 for McNeil. And he hands it off up the middle. Did the ball come out? It looks like the ball came out. The ball out. did come out, and it's recovered by Rodriguez. That is number 15, Antoine Roten, the freshman, recovering the fumble. And Rodriguez gets the ball, and like we were saying, good field position once again. I mean, just poor execution today from Bethel. It's costing them so much here today. Yeah, it's good to see Anton Roten really having an impact on the field as a freshman. Just last game versus Armio, he had three sacks and ten tackles. He's a freshman? He's a 14-year-old out there? I mean, the potential sky high for a lot of yeah. players on this defense. I mean, if he's going to play four years of varsity ball, look out. Yeah. yeah. So now first and ten for Dylan Burke in the Rodriguez offense. It's up 46 to nothing here with two and a half minutes to go in the second quarter. And Marcy Ciaz gets the ball, breaks the tackle, and gets out of bounds after a solid gain on the run play. I mean, the blocks just set up so well every time for this Rodriguez line. They they pull out to the left so good. That's why you see them mainly do their pitch plays and end arounds to the left side. Yeah, I mean, the speed of this Rodriguez offense to get to the outside is phenomenal. So now Berg drops back to pass, throws it into the end zone, and that's caught by Monciano Ciaz on the far side. Back pylon, touchdown, Rodriguez. I mean, Once again, I feel like I've said it 100 times tonight. <laughs> I mean, have a game, young man. Kicking onside kicks beautifully, getting touchdowns out of the backfield. What more could you ask from him today? Yeah, I mean, you really hit it on the noggin there. Really just a beautiful game. I, if there was such thing as high school fantasy football, he'd be yeah. on my team. Oh, yeah. He'd be on he'd my have team. like 40 points right now. He does have a hat trick now in the first half of today's game. Two receiving touchdowns, one rushing. That was to start the game. And they will go for two once again, just run up the scoreboard. Pitch outside to Marcy Sias, and he's stuffed. By number 62, Justin Lewis. And that's, that's a great play by him. That's the best thing we've seen from Bethel. On that two-point conversion, playing defense like that. Just, I mean, way to play with heart still. So now that'll keep the score at 52 to nothing. And they're on pace to score 104 points. Yeah, I mean, last year this game was 53 to zero. Yeah. They're doing this at half. We still got a whole other half to play. Yeah, I mean. They're looking to outperform their previous selves. I think it's just a testament. I mean, of course, the defense has been great. Of course, the weapons have been good. But I think this is a testament to Dylan Burke. Last year against this game, he had the other Missouri brother, Jeffrey, and Bentley Williams, the running back, who were both the dogs. He lost him in this offseason, but it, it has not made a difference. He is still all over on offense. You think Miles King had an agenda out today, do better than last time we did? Because last time they were sure. crazy in this game. I mean... Having that agenda when you won 53 to nothing is a tough testament, but I'm sure that's what Miles King is King is all about, having a tough objective every week. And Montiel Sienes kicks another squib kick up the middle, and it's bobbled by a Bethel player once again, but he returns it. He's got space to the outside. Got a lot of room to run, and he did step out. Running up the sideline, that was number 23, Cameron Usher. Now that was the best thing we've seen all day from Bethel. And there we go. Now we see a little bit of smiles in the away crowd. You know, the sideline getting a little bit excited. You know, it's a start. Maybe I mean, a little bit too late, but a start is a start. I mean, let's see what drive they could put together with two minutes to go here. You just get some fundamentals, and make the second half. Hopefully you play some better 
football. With two minutes to go, we do have a Rodriguez player down on the field as there was a big collision that caused all the players to go into one spot and giving Cameron Usher a lot of room to run on the outside. Oh, the stretcher's coming out. Don't believe oh. I saw who it was. We'll look to update that as quick as possible. We saw the stretcher get brought out for the last or excuse me, for the JV game. And fortunately, the player for Bethel ended up being okay. Just thoughts and prayers out right now to him. Hopefully everything's okay. Yes, yeah, this, this looks a little ugly. I, I know in that JV game, he was a lot quicker to get up. Yeah, they're, they're talking to him quite a bit right now, making sure he's all cognitive up there, answering questions as best as he can possibly do right now. And he is up to his, on his feet. feet. And that's number 16. And it is good to see him up on his feet. Scary situation as they did bring out the stretcher as a precaution. Yeah, it looks like on our roster right now, it's Sir Malachi Drags. The senior strong safety. That's good to see, though, him get up on his yeah. own feet, have a little jog to the sideline, even though he's hurting a little bit. Good to see. Just don't pray for scary collisions like that, as we saw last night in Thursday night football, Tua Tonga Vailoa yeah. having a serious concussion once again. He's got to hang him up. I, you know, I wish the best for Tua, but the best is, is. for him to step away. Yeah, from I football. mean, four already in your playing career. Yeah, yeah. four, uh, four concussions in what two and a half years. Yeah, I mean, three, it's, yeah. yeah, it's really unfortunate for him. And all prayers go out to him as well. So now, first and ten for the Bethel Jaguars, and at the biggest hole you can see, and McNeil keeps up the middle, and he's driven down. By number six, Malachi wrote in the D tackle sophomore. The man who's got a two point conversion today. I mean, they just absolutely obliterate this O line every snap, it feels like. It's just like, it feels like they're playing versus a junior varsity squad. Yeah, I mean, going into the second half, I, I don't think anything up the middle is going to be available. <laughs> Not with Roten down there. I mean, when you got Roten. At D tackle, you got Paul Amu at the end, mm -hmm. and you also got McPeter sometimes off the edge at linebacker. Those are some big boys to deal with. Yeah, McPeter's is creeping up, and McNeil keeps it to the left side, and he is met by number 47, James Kaufman, another starting DN who doesn't get a lot of love on this def defense. But he does cause some havoc. I, li I like what I've seen from him, though. I, I think it was the Fairfield game he got a fumble recovery. I mean, he goes quietly. We have a lot of big-name players on yeah. this defense. They just got so much talent on this roster this year. It's hard to cover everyone, it yeah. feels like. Yeah, there, there's really no weak spot in that front four for Rodriguez, all four of them. So now it's just under 40 seconds to go here in the first half. Rodriguez leading 52 to nothing. It's now third and six here for Bethel, and they're looking to get their first first down of the game. I feel like I've been saying that all second quarter, but still hasn't happened yet. I mean, the clock and is running. Cl yeah, clock is running. We, we are down go. to 10 seconds. McNeil likely is just waiting until the final play here. Yeah, final play. Snaps it with just under five seconds left. And he's going to throw deep down the field. And it is nearly intercepted by Marcy Ciaz, but it comes out of his hand. That was intended for, I believe, number eight, Dennis Walton III, and that'll do it for the first half as Rodriguez plays almost perfect football besides the penalties, leading 52 to nothing. I mean, what, what, a, what an abomination of a game I when mean, it comes to Bethel. Like you're saying, Holden, Rodriguez is just playing absolutely great football. It's like nothing they can do is going wrong. 
It's like everything they do is right. They touch the football, big play happens. Only thing Miles King's going to get on about is penalties, penalties, penalties. Play more discipline this second half, you'll make him a much happier man, I'm sure. Yeah, and I mean, if you're Bethel, I don't even know what you say at halftime. I mean, they've tried the run. They've done a decent job in the past game. They're just completely outmatched. They're going to have to try something up. I mean, for the second half, the game's already over. I'd like to see McNeil air it out a little bit more. Might as well. He's still a junior. You know, this is learning experience on a road game. Tough crowd. Let's see what he does in the second half. Why not? What do we have to lose? Yeah, and in the second half, we will have a running start. A running clock, excuse me, for the rest of the game. As Rodriguez leads 52 to nothing. we will see you guys in the second half. If you are interested in a career in sports broadcasting, whether you're commentating a live game, or hosting your own TV show, or working behind the scenes, then this is the class for you. For more information, contact Greg Poff, that's me, at Solano.edu. We hope to see you here next semester, and remember, it's more than just sports, it's an education. Hi, my name is Eric Visser. I'm in my fifth year as the athletic director of Solano College. To experience community college and its mission has been an outstanding experience. Solano College has a very rich tradition in intercollegiate athletics dating back to 1947. I'm very proud to uh, communicate that that rich tradition is still being continued with fine young men and women that represent Solano College on and off the court. In the fall we have the volleyball program, we have a very successful women's soccer program, we have both men's and women's basketball, and then we transition to four programs, baseball, of softball, men's women's tennis, and men's and women's swimming. It is our mission to excel our programs and our student athletes in academics. All of our student athletes are committed to give back to the community. And we would invite you to be a part of Solano College Athletics by visiting our website www.solanoathletics.com and you feel a warm welcome at Solano. College just got affordable. Up to 100% of enrollment fees can be reimbursed for first-time college students taking full-time classes. At Solano Community College, we are taking full advantage of this to further your future. With certificate and degree programs in industrial technology, aeronautics, biotechnology, and many others, Solano Community College is a staple for success. For more information, please contact the Financial Aid Office at 707-864-7000. And we are back for the second half of this ball game. Rodriguez up big, 52-0. to zero. Uh, We do have some new announcers in the booth. Subbing out for Holden Beers will be Mason Flores. What's going on, y'all? Thank you for having me. Mason, I know you were on the camera, but was there anything you saw in that first half oh, you man. wanted to talk about? First of all, that defense of Rodriguez, whole season they've been playing with some fire under their feet. Um... Their kicker, I'm gonna give some, their kicker some love. Those squib kicks with the field position, it's just killer for this for this offense on the other side. Yes, sir. Manciano says has been all over this game, whether if it's from the special teams or the touchdowns or even the defense. He's all over the place. I mean, we just seen so many high explosive plays tonight. I'm excited to watch the second half, even if it is 52 to nothing. I'm excited for yes. all the big plays to see. I'm afraid we won't see as much in the first half as for the second half since it is such a blowout. It will be running clock. So this third and fourth quarter will be going by a little bit slower, or excuse me, faster. Hey, Rodriguez, I want to see them get people who haven't been involved as much this season involved early in this third qu quarter and get, get some other people to score. Everybody got to eat. And do you think – Burke is going to be in at quarterback at all this half. Maybe a third quarter, rest him fourth. Don't I, want to risk him getting hurt with the score being how it is. Yeah, I think it's fair to see him in the third at least. Maybe not the fourth. We'll see what happens. But I'm sure he'll at least get one more drive in this game. I mean, he's just played a heck of a ball game along with yeah. everyone else on this Rodriguez it's team. Beautiful to watch. Man, when I was doing camera, uh, 
the Beth Bethel uh, crowd, <laughs> they they were calling this an embarrassing performance. <laughs> <laughs> it was uh, it's pretty sad to watch. But uh, well, if I'm on the Bethel sideline, I'm keeping my head up. I'm telling my players, I'm telling my teammates, I'm telling my coaches, I'm like, hey, let's go, let's go win the second half. Let's go, let's go send a message to our to our school, send a message to the rest of the schools that we can fight through adversity, you know what I mean? Yeah, you don't want to be like, we're giving up that easy. Yeah. You want to continue to fight in this ball game. So Bethel will start off squib with the ball, kick. another squib kick. This one going all the way oh down. Goodness, Finally, oh Jaguars player does have the ball Ooh. and is tackled <laughs> down. Oh, my goodness. So, again, some rough field position to start off their drive for the Jaguars. Man, they just shoot off like missiles down that field. They are just speed demons down there. That's a great way to describe this kickoff unit for Rodriguez. Man. Missiles. They absolutely find the target and swarm to that football. They just love. You could just tell Rodriguez loves playing the game of football. They just love every second of it, no matter what's going on in the game. I mean, playing under Miles King, you gotta love it. Yeah. It makes life fun here. The play calling is just so amazing. It is. Yeah, I, I think that's a really great point. I mean, you could tell from the difference from the Rodriguez offense to the Bethel defense. Yeah. It's a clear difference with the motion and the different schemes. Absolutely. It's a different level here at Rodriguez. Kylan McNeil will head back out there for the offense. Trying to get some points on the board here in this third quarter. We'll see if they start off with the run. No, it won't. No, it will. Excuse me, a pitch. Yeah. And going backwards, able to break the tackle from James Kaufman, and it's finally taken down. Looks like it's a gain of nothing. It looks like Rodriguez does have their second team players in, and they – are still well coached football team. This is crazy. This is insane. I wonder if their second strings could beat the Bethel's first strings because this is crazy. That They all play together well. They all got good chemistry. You could tell they play for one another. Just Bethel is just all out of sorts. The amount of communication by this Rodriguez squad is incredible. So it was marked as a loss of three. It's now second and 13. 11 minutes, 10 seconds to go. Again, the clock will be running for the entirety of this third quarter and fourth. I feel like Bethel should just throw the ball. Throw the ball downfield. We got to lose. It's going to be a handoff. Stuffed at the line again. I mean, that's what Rodriguez does on this D-line. Swarm, swarm, swarm. Find that football. Get there. Make the tackle. So now Bethel has a ways to go. It's now third and 13. Not the start you're looking for to open up the second half. Still looking for a first down in this game too, Drew. Yeah. Their only first down was a penalty. It's rough. So excuse me, it's not third and thirteen. It's it's third and fourteen. One so more yard. One yard. That's all good. <laughs> Alan Neal. Test these corners. Test these new corners. It's second strings. It's like the whistle will blow. Is it time out? Time out, time out rock. It's like they'll change up some personnel, maybe. Saw something they didn't like. So yeah, it looks like the Missouri brothers are going to get a break the rest of this game along with Dylan Burke. By the way, the defense is lining up here in this second half. Yeah, I mean, it's a well-deserved break for sure. They balled out this game. They did exactly what they needed to do and more. I mean... This is a perfect opportunity for Rodriguez second strings to make a name for themselves, mm -hmm. maybe have more of an opportunity going forward if they play outstanding. And let's just see. Let's see what the backups got going because I know as a backup, you love having any kind of opportunity. And mm -hmm. as long as you play mistake-free football, you're making your job easier. That's a good point. It may be garbage time as a result of the game, but these players have a lot to play for. Every snap will count for them. And we can't forget about Monciano Ciaz here. Yeah. Probably the player of the game for Rodriguez. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot to pick from there, but yeah. Ciaz <laughs> is not a bad pick, of course. Third and 15. They're sending a blitz. Josh back. They got some. Going to air it out, it's and it will go to nowhere. A flag mm. is down. We'll see what they call it. 
Let's Might be a holding on Rodriguez. Let's see here. I believe it is a pass interference or a holding. Yeah. I mean, that is what you're going to see from these second strings here. Not a lot of game time under their belt. A little, little more mistakes. Probably a little more nervous to play in this second half of football. Yeah, if you're Bethel, you want to take this opportunity and go score. That gives you a little momentum. I know it's 52-0, to zero, but as a player, you want to keep the other quarters out of your mind. It's 0-0. Zero, zero. The game's already over. Just play to score. Play, to, play your best football. So this will turn into a first down for the Jaguars. Looks like a cover one by the defense. I think they're disguising it as a blitz. And they did. McNeil going to drop back again. And good defense. Good defense by number 11 for Rodriguez, Isaiah Williams. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they disguise the blitz. They disguise the blitz. They fake the blitz. Drop back into cover three. I mean, Williams just putting the seatbelt on him, mm -hmm. just absolutely locked around him, making sure to get his hand on that football, not allowing him to the complete the catch. The scheme is just so incredible to watch. I love, I love defense. That's my, that's my side. The scheme on both sides of the football are, is just beautiful because you never know what to expect. I mean, you Bethel for sure watched film all week, and they clearly were not prepared enough for this defense and offense of Rodriguez. It's truly beautiful football. So it looks like the clock is stopped. It's 946. I forget. Oh, do they nah, do man. that for flags? Or um, they shouldn't because it's 52 it's on the zip. Ref signal. It's going to be a handoff. Gain maybe one yard. It won't be enough for any serious damage. I'm surprised Bethel isn't even like fighting anybody. I, I'd be pretty heated if I'm down 52-0. Well, but good d discipline. They know it to move on. And it is what it is. Like you said, it's good discipline, way to keep their composure. I know things can get out of hand in these types of games very easily, but you just want to keep calm, cool, and collected. Yeah, it's tough. This is the worst games for everyone, the players, the coaches, the fans. Shoot, even us, we, we want to see a good game, you yes. know, but that Rodriguez online, you know they're happy. You know these fans are happy. They're they're putting on a show. So the run was marked as a gain of three. It's third and seven. Looking for a first down. McNeil Pressure. escaping the pocket. Here we go. Okay. Got some room to run. Looks Ooh, like he man. will go for a Ooh, lot at going. midfield, still on his feet. Still going, and is finally tackled at around the 30. And that is the most explosive run we've seen today from the Jaguars. I mean, just the amount of excitement you felt on, on this sight line was just incredible. Just everyone's jumping up and down over here who's left in the bleachers, getting excited for the players. Yeah, that in, there's like 13 people in there. <laughs> hey, that, that was an electric play, but let's keep it real. That's why Rodriguez has their second strings in. They got the, the, the second strings are in. Their second strings for a reason. That's all I, I got to say. I mean, if you're Bethel, you'll take anything positive yeah, here. for though. sure. That was their most positive play they've had by far. Mm -hmm. so now we'll see if they go back to on the ground with McNeil. The ball is on the 31. I wouldn't be surprised if they sent pressure here. Bethel looking to get on the board with some points here. It's a handoff. Is it bobbled? Oh, fumble. <laughs> it is a fumble. Does Rod recover it? Bethel got nope. it. Bethel Bethel's gets it, yes. It. Way to get on top of that football yeah, uh, if that you're Bethel. These fumbles are killing them, man. The, the, the penalties, mm -hmm. the fumbles on the kickoff, the fumble snaps, the fumbled handoffs. Man, their hands must be cold or something because – they can't control this ball. Next practice is going to be a rough one for them, boys. Man, incoming gassers, man. Incoming gassers. Oh, man, them gassers are going to hurt. And that's kind of just what Rodriguez does. I mean, if you play them, it by the looks of it, you're going to have a rough practice man. after. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Hey, they got a thing called Hell Week in offseason where you're just working out, working out. It, you might well, when you're playing Rodriguez, you might as well call Hell Week. <laughs> It's second and 12. Yeah, fake blitz. Dropping back in. New. Oh, again. Try to escape again, and we'll throw it out. 
I mean, McNeil on that play, he's just got to flip his hips more and then he'll be able to throw the ball more accurately instead of throwing a duck towards the sideline. Well, it is harder to make that throw because you are on the run and you can't fully stop your momentum. And if I was Bethel, I would scheme my playbook more of the quarterback running to the outside like with play action and getting him on the move because clearly, as he's shown in the second half, he's he's got the mobility. So if you run – Granted, you do have to run the ball successful, and they haven't done that all game. But if you do get a good run game, and you, you those play actions will get open, get wide receivers open. So more of a bootleg you'd like yeah, to see 100%. out of this offense. Get, get them scrambling outside. I feel like Bethel, well, when you're on offense, you're going to – the starting game plan is 15 plays. You have a script. So the first 15 plays are always scripted. And Bethel, they started off, they didn't start off correct. They ran the ball three and out. They didn't want to get check downs. I feel like going forward, if you're going against Rod, you want to get check downs early. Third and 12. Neil will have to come up with something. Pressure's oh, coming. Damn. It's James Kaufman. Oh, he's he's going to air it out. And oh, intercepted by number one. Who else but Jermaine Missouri? Oh my God. And he's going to return it for some more. And oh, so we'll nice. stop at the 20. He just said, let me have some more fun, coach. I'm going to go out there and make another play for you. Oh, my gosh. So, I mean, just Look how, how much fun they are having. How incredible is he to watch every week? It's insane. What's his stat line tonight? So that's his oh, second oh interception. Yes, two, yes, two interceptions. I think he has a receiving touchdown. Not sure on the I, yardage, but yeah. he, no, he's been having – one hell of a game. Oh, this yeah. is so fun to watch, man. They're they're having so much fun. These kids just love playing the game of football. I mean, I love it too. If I'm about 15, oh, yeah. 52 to zero. Oh, it looks like the Missouri <laughs> brothers are on oh. offense still. And, and is it Burke? Burke in the backfield. Does look like Dylan Burke. Burke. Yeah, it is. Yeah. yeah. So Burke will drop back to start off this drive. Hit a oh nice little goodness. flat, and oh <laughs> there goes the Missouri oh brothers. My God. Oh my God. Oh <laughs> and my. it is going to start <laughs> stop at midfield. I mean, I don't know how many more adjectives I can use yeah, tonight to describe them. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my. <laughs> hey, he ran through that, man, like it was a foam wall. There was no brick wall. There that, it was a foam wall. That's a scary sight to see a six foot five man oh coming right at gosh. you, lowering his shoulder. So he is unafraid. After one play, Rodriguez offense already at midfield. Burke this time oh will goodness. keep it for himself. He's got a couple blockers, able to pass through. Oh still going, God. breaks that tackle at the 30, oh 20 now. Still going and will go out of bounds. It looks to be the 17. <laughs> I mean, this is insane. Talk your smack, Dylan. Yeah. Burke laying that stiff arm on him like it was nothing. Burke just chirping at him. <laughs> oh my goodness, Burke, he has a right to. Burke's probably oh saying God. it's too easy for him right oh now. Oh my gosh. He look like Lamar Jackson. I wonder if that's why he picked number eight. Could be a good inspiration pick for him. So the clock is stopped at 6.04. It yeah, was okay, now running. Looks like it might be a full quarter oh, in this third. Oh, my goodness. As there's a pass, Aaron completed. And is it a touchdown? Oh, my God. Still going? You got is it? Stop. Looks like he's oh in. <laughs> Another easy touchdown. I mean, come on. It wasn't even close. I mean, it's just effortless right now for these Missouri brothers, Zayas brothers. I mean, just... The brothers, those hey, duos are killing it Brotherly love, tonight. man. No Philly. <laughs> now 58-0, to zero, Rodriguez tacking up this lead. I got to imagine we see another pitch here to the left yeah. on this two-point conversion. They just walk in every time on these two-point conversions. They just oh, – the scheme is just – they're getting the easy completions on offense. I feel like that's what teams have to game plan against Rodriguez – defense test oh. them with the quick game oh they're, they're going it. for the extra mm -hmm. point we'll see what Sayas has here I mean all right is, he said give me a shot coach. Died down hey why not can he add a PAT to his name tonight he, he can I mean he's just oh, an athlete ladies right and gentlemen 59 for Rodriguez I mean dominant I'm, if he's that good of a kicker I don't know it's, you might see him doing this more often for this team. Yeah, I think Rodriguez deserves some dinner after tonight. Oh, yeah. a nice performance, yeah. Maybe hit up some in and out Oh, man. Seems like a pretty common theme after a high school 100%. football game. Yeah, they be busy, man. I'm trying to get a double-double. 
That's what I'm saying. I, I, do I really want to wait 40 minutes yeah, for a double nah, double? Man. Nah, I did it last week or two weekends ago. That you waited 40 minutes, really? Yeah, yes, I, I did. Too, was it worth bro. it? Yes, it was. <laughs> I had such good food, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. Hey, nah. In and Out will hit. In and Out is, you know, S tier food, but. I don't know, man. Yeah, you could go Chipotle, you, you probably quicker. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's better options, hey. in my opinion, well, I mean, considering the time. Living in California, you got to take advantage of that. That's true. You're not from California, so. <laughs> no, I'm not. Originally not. I did. Been, so, been around. Do you remember your first time eating a double-double from oh, In-N-Out? My first experience, actually, In-N-Out, I didn't like it. Really? Oh. It grew on me. Okay. Yeah. Okay. You know, yeah. I respect it. Yeah. I respect it. As long as it grows on you, of course. I respect it. It's the spread they use in those oh, burgers. Oh, it's so good. Yeah. We out here talking about in and out. Yeah, I'm getting hungry. <laughs> Let's focus on the game here, ladies and gentlemen. Another squib kick. Uh, another bro. Bethel is able to recover it. This is crazy. Again, 59. Oh, well, here comes a penalty. Well, probably a sportsman-like yeah. conduct. Yeah, let's get mad, ladies and gentlemen. Let's get angry. They're frustrated. Yeah, I caught I it earlier. They're going to get frustrated. They're going to try and fight. I mean, when you're getting disrespected like this, you don't want to take any more trash talk tonight. Oh, my goodness, man. Just kneel it out at this point. If you're Bethel, just take the L, man. You got a quarter and a half to go. I mean, Bethel won't do that. They want to get some good plays under their belt. But Yeah, man. Depressing is the word I would use right now. Yeah. So it looks like the clock is running, so... Finally. They did so show some promise uh, last drive with mm -hmm. the Until scrambling that. ability and then uh, the interception. <laughs> Nothing's going right. I mean, a Missouri brother lurking across the field per usual. They All they had to do was put in one starter and it was an interception. That, yeah. is, that just tells you how talented this Rodriguez team is. I mean, I think they crossed midfield. They said starters have at it. Mason, again, a, a former football player. H have you ever been on the opposite side of a game as bad as this? Oh, my gosh, bro. Plenty of times. <laughs> I mean. That we'll see Wood experience. Yeah, oh, man. <laughs> yes, uh, that is right. You went to Wood. Relax, bro. Uh, <laughs> it mean, happens every once in a while, but it, it, it's not as terrible as this. I mean, 59-0 uh, yeah, I mean, is crazy. I, yeah, I, I went to Wood, too. I just didn't yeah. go to the football games oh, first. Oh, man. Hey, I can't even blame you. A pitch to start this oh drive, and oh my goodness, <laughs> Jamar Missouri, a grown man in the backfield. Oh my God. Absolutely bullied him to the ground there. Just said, get off my lawn. Oh, that is a dog, certified dog. He's, oh my goodness, bro. I'm barking at him. I'm, I'm getting all fours, and I'm barking at that dude if I tackle him like that. You taking an unsportsmanlike conduct Oh, penalty. I'm doing it, bro. I'm, oh, oh, oh. I'm barking. I'm doing all kinds of stuff, bro. Do you think Coach would be happy with you? Absolutely not. I'm taking it, though. <laughs> Careful though, Mason. In a game like this, you don't want to choke the game away with oh. flex. It's 59 0. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man, don't do not do that, bro. I'm surprised that we still got as many We've fans in the We've seen crazier crowd, things man. happen. No, we haven't. <laughs> <laughs> no, we have not, ladies and gentlemen. So after that tackle, it's now second and 25. Going to oh. have to try through the air. Oh McNeil. Just off the nothing. lineman's helmet. This is. I'm trying not to laugh, man. It's just it's it's honestly sad. The it's it's the first strings well, against the second strings, and he can't even get the ball past the line of scrimmage. You can't help but laugh sometimes. It's not funny per se, but like sometimes you can't help but let it out. It's, tra it's truly a tragedy. It's, it's more of like zero, man. a laugh in hysterics more than yeah. it is anything. Yeah. If but, I'm a receiver. Can I get the ball? Have they have they made a completion all day today? Yes, they have. Uh, yeah. It, a few little swing passes out to the side. Oh, but yeah. The nothing deep. I, yeah, nothing. I think most of their completions have resulted in a loss of yards <laughs> more than a gain. Give me, give me the ball, coach, if I'm Bethel, man. Third and 25. Can there McNeil make magic? There, oh, no. No. Okay. The ball hits. Watch out on the sideline, ladies <laughs> and gentlemen. Yeah, heads up, bro. Just a tad bit high for the receiver. Yeah, he's a he's a tall guy but himself. So the six four quarterback, I believe six six, six foot three. three. Yeah, he's McNeil. Uh, he's only a junior. He still has one more season yeah. to develop. Mm -hmm. We'll see how he plays next year. I mean, next year could be completely based different on, for him. Ba based on this performance, I'm not sure if I want to play. If I'm him, like personally, I want to win. Uh, and well, he's trying as hard as you can tell. He he has some fire in his soul. But 
it's, I mean, it's so on, hard to do that when you're on those run plays. Away. You see him trying to make magic yeah. happen. This reminds me of Justin Fields on the Bears in 2022, man. Don't, don't get me started. So McNeil will go for it on okay. fourth and 25. Pressure is coming oh and goodness. sacked. Number 14, Jaden Jones, 6'2", Junior, 240. I mean, yeah. when you're a 240-pound man, you're just going to bring someone down so easy. Yeah, man. Nearly oh horse collar God. tackle, but great technique. Got him down to the ground quickly. No chance for McNeil. Like, have they not play. made it? A non electrifying play like it, every single thing Rodriguez has done tonight has been electrifying. It's They're making me hyped it's just, over it's just here. Give me fired up, but I, I, yeah, no. It's time to pack your bags if you're Bethel, man. And it looks like it will run down the end of this quarter. That is right. And with the buzzer there, we are heading to the fourth. Rodriguez 59 to 0. It's a nail biter. We'll see what happens in the fourth. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back for this fourth quarter action. Holden Beers is taking the place of Drew Kirby on color commentary. Robert Murray, myself, will be doing play-by-play -play to finish this one out. And dominating third quarter once again for Rodriguez. We'll see how this fourth quarter shapes out here today. Yeah, I mean, I don't think they'll get the 100-point mark that we were talking no. about in the first half, but once again, another dominant quarter, like you said. From Rodriguez, I mean, you showed they showed the physicality there in that third quarter, both offensively and defensively. And we see Burke here in the shotgun. Bethel's taking. He takes pressure. the snap. Oh my goodness! Throws it to the left oh side. Goodness. Target for number three, Kalen Highball. Looks like just out of a, reach. Looked like it was a hold. I, I'm surprised they didn't throw a flag. Yeah, I, I thought the same thing, Mason. I believe that was pass interference, but. Mm. Now, Mason's had some strong opinions here in this second half. Really? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Man, what opinions can you not have? It's 59-0. to zero. <laughs> It's a tough game. It, I'm saying what the coach is saying in, it, what, what, in the film room on Monday, on Wednesday, actually, because that's when you do film. Burke will remain in the shotgun. Look, they're just trying to throw it up. <laughs> he takes a snap once again, yep. scrambling out to the right. He oh throws. God. And it's Ooh. caught. Oh, oh incomplete. <laughs> he had it in oh. his hands, hit the ground. The ball popped out. That was number 17, Samuel Hall. I mean, that was a miraculous oh play gosh. by Dylan Burke. I mean, feeling the pressure on the O-line after no one was open on the initial reads, rolls out to his right, knowing he has a receiver on the right side and throws it up. Almost a perfect ball to Samuel Hall. Unfortunately, it was just a little high, and he couldn't catch it. Hey, we, throw, we call that a dot. That was a yeah. pure dot. For Man. sure. If I'm Samuel Hall, I'm kicking myself because you don't get too many opportunities like that. And, oh, my goodness, what a beautiful ball. A little high, but. Same formation for this Rodriguez squad. Bethel center pressure. Burke rolling out left this time, making a man miss, switching oh. it to the right. <laughs> Still oh, looking wow. to throw. Cross body <laughs> to, <laughs> to Sayez <laughs> for the touchdown. There's a penalty. There, penalty, is, there is a penalty. It was thrown. I, oh, I believe it's on no. Rodriguez. Looks like this one will be coming back. I mean, despite that, what an oh effort gosh. by Dylan Burke to keep that play alive and then find Monciano Ciaz down the field to. This man is going nuclear. He threw that ball 
30 yards down the field across the body right to his chest. Oh, my goodness. It feels like any play they've had that's been called back has been so exciting tonight. Yeah, I mean, he's just – I mean, Burke, despite the penalties that his team has had, he's been so explosive. I, I think he's player of the game in this yeah, he's, blowout from he's Rodriguez. He just plays so effortlessly. He just plays with so much grit. Again, from the shotgun will be Burke. He takes the snap. <laughs> He throws it there left mm. for number three, Kalen Highbog, and just doesn't seem to have the target on him quite right today. Yeah, I mean, he's so used to those taller receivers in the Missouri Brothers, and Monsignor Ciaz is a pretty big guy as well, and Highball is not as big as them. You know, he's, he's a smaller guy, gets the ball, run, running it a lot on the ground, not used to playing receiver as much. That was his only second hit. Second inaccurate throw of the night. One to the full tight end in the end zone earlier, and j that one just now. And once again, ladies and gentlemen, they are in the shotgun. If I'm Bethel, fourth I, I and don't twenty, send pressure. I want to just drop back because Burke is just going to run past my guys. And they're just going to all out blitz. They're, they're still going to do it, and he gets the ball oh off goodness. to Jamar, Missouri. Oh making one man miss, cutting <laughs> left, and oh it's easy goodness. as finding gold here for him tonight. Touchdown, Jamar, Missouri. Credit to Keelan Highball for that downfield block oh my on God. the five yard line to get Jamar, Missouri to walk into the end zone. <laughs> oh my goodness. What a play call by Miles. Like, we have to give a lot of credit right there. They knew they were going to send the house. And they called a screen play. Oh, my goodness. And it just worked perfectly. Uh, looks like Monciano Ciaz is out to kick another PAT attempt. We saw him hit one earlier. It looks I'm, pretty th good. That was, that was his best hey. field goal of the whole season. I, I said it while I was on the camera. I, I told Malcolm, I was like, that's his best kick. 100%. I think Miles King's trusting him more in that role. Yeah. He's more of a utility role. More and it's, like Taysom Hill, it feels yeah, like. Yeah, and it's good to, you know, get that – rhythm going when it comes to you know something you struggle at going into league play uh, oh looks like they're oh. just taking a knee <laughs> don't want to risk <laughs> anything so they, they throw it oh up my God. every single play of that drive and then on, on the, the two point or two. on the kick two winger they, version they just take a knee they just oh didn't want to risk it they didn't, <laughs> they didn't want to allow points on the board <laughs> yeah, oh I my guess. goodness just they they want to stop disrespecting these boys man <laughs> these boys have a family to go to they got dinner to eat I think Miles King just saw 65, nothing on the score race. So let's not put more salt in that wound tonight. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they're going to. 6.54 remaining here in the I mean, fourth quarter. Just get some points on the board, man. Beth Lilly, it hurts my heart to see this. I ha I have to say it. I want, I want them to score. I, I would love to see Bethel score, yeah. too. I mean, you know, we had the same situation with Fremont. Yeah. And unfortunately, that game ended the way it did on that. Same with Fairfield as well. Yeah, same with Fairfield. Let's see if Bethel can make a difference. Third, that. third time's a charm, yeah. am I right? In this, in you this will conference, be right, though, Holden. The, they ha Rodriguez does have one of the best home field advantages in the conference for sure. You are right about that, Mason. Their crowd is just into it, night in, night out, neon night, like Holden yeah. was saying earlier. Love seeing all those green, pinks, and oranges in the crowd. Their student section is just amazing, like. The singing while they're in the crowd dancing, the band playing amazingly. It's just incredible atmosphere. Yeah, I mean, they got the music going yeah. in between timeouts all the time. It's Groovy. a great atmosphere. Yeah. Vibes are 100 here tonight, ladies and gentlemen, as Sayas is back to kick. Yeah, it's looking like an Alabama versus Georgia th Southern game right now. <laughs> and he'll squib the kick once again. Fielded at the 30-yard <laughs> line. Oh, and he's getting oh, down the nice side line. Turn. Oh. And he is down. <laughs> and it looks to be at the 40-yard line of Rodriguez. I don't know. As a penalty goes oh, flying. Oh, no, he took off his helmet. I don't know if the broadcast caught that, but some fan on the sideline we have a, said, oh, my goodness, we have he a caught player, it. <laughs> yeah. We have a player down here oh for no. Bethel, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, you hate to see it. I mean, they've had so much trouble on the kicks all night long, and they finally get a good, good
Good return and fielding. That within itself is a win on, for them, in my opinion. I yeah. think that is an incredible. They're 1-0 they're right now. We'll in inform terms of you who it is. Oh, man. I believe it's number 23. Yeah, it is. Three Hunter, or excuse me, um, Cameron Usher on that play. Tough. He, he was the returner. He gets up and walks off under his own power. Maybe got the wind knocked out of him there. He's had the longest he has, he's had the longest <laughs> plays and of the day for them on the kickoff returns when they do receive the kick. And well. number 17 Castle Dixon oh, looks like he's getting a cramp rolled out. Yeah, I, don't know. I mean the fans, getting it rolled out when yeah, you're down 65 to nothing. Yeah, the fans love to see people getting their cramps rolled out, that's for sure. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> drink some water, man. As we approach hey, that, four minutes to play here in this fourth quarter. Hey, you know what? 65 nothing you is know what the score. Do it? Some pickle juice, man. Get some pickle juice in your really? system. Really? Yeah. Hey, that pickle juice help you with your cramps, man. Where'd you well, hear does that? It have, yeah, does it have electrolytes uh, in it? Hey, yeah. That, that pickle hey. juice gets you, man. I'll have to try it out, even though I hate pickles. Oh, oh, don't do it. You man. don't like it, pickles? It'll kill you. No, I, I can't stand the smell. I, I'm a dill pickle, I man. love pickles. Really? Pickles, yes. Bro, pulse. I love the flavor it gives. Pulse, we were man. talking in and out during the third quarter hey, while you were yeah. gone. Oh, really? Yes. But For back sure. to football. Bethel <laughs> is <laughs> starting on the 41-yard line of Rodriguez. 65 zip still, man. Go score. Bethel looking for their first points of the game. They have three minutes, one drive, and a dream. What would you like to see here, gentlemen? Some good, quick. Just run the ball. Like, run the ball with your quarterback. Do some bootleg. Get yeah, him out of the Yeah, pocket. I mean, he, he, he's so mobile. That one that one run he had when he dropped back to pass the last Absolutely. quarter. McNeil was insane. Also bootleg. going from the shotgun here. He takes a okay. snap. Yep. Looking That's right. Quick pass to Ooh. Uh, oh, Dennis flag. Walton. Oh he's making some moves. Oh and goodness. he is brought Another down. Like, why, why throw the flag? Why, why throw it? There's Let three minutes go, to go man. in the game. They're now 65 to oh nothing. Oh, my well, goodness. I mean, if it's on Rod, I get it. They're trying to get him to get closer. but This could be rumors, but they might have a quota here today on penalties they need to hit. <laughs> you think they got an over and block in the back. <laughs> block in the back on. If you bet the over on penalties tonight, I oh, think you're you hitting. Yeah. You're hitting your penalties. And the penalty will back up Bethel here. Oh, we are approaching man. two minutes and 15 seconds left to play in this fourth quarter. But I was commenting earlier on in the third quarter that they should have, Bethel should have been going with the short pass game, quick pass game from the get-go. I think uh, Rodriguez has not been prepared for that all season. And when it gets to them, I mean, we just saw it there without the block in the back. It was a pretty big game. Yeah, I mean, it, it was a first down. They haven't had many first yeah. downs today at all. So, I think that's what teams are going to be looking to do against Rodriguez in the future, in the future weeks. McNeil checking if the refs are ready and everyone is ready to go here. Here comes the blitz. Receiver in motion. He gives it to him. Oh, yeah. And that is oh, another Damani Jackson There's making some flag. moves. Uh, but it will not be enough as this Rodriguez <laughs> team swarms to him once again, bringing him down. What? Another flag, like uh, just yeah, just let this clock tick down. We got a minute. The ref saying even these refs don't. The want ref this saying game. the clock to telling the clock to stop. Why? I don't know. The refs he are was, talking he was, it over. He was signaling it for at the clock to stop. The clock has not stopped. You know what? Let's give the refs some slack. They they're trying to just trying to do their job. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, they're putting in a full hey, effort. You know. Got to respect them. Just on like that what one. we're doing right now, we got to keep commenting through this whole game. They got to rep through this whole game. And we have 50 seconds remaining here in this fourth quarter. Looking like Bethel's going to need a miracle to score. Just throw it up. Throw it up. Why not? What well, you got to lose? You got 30 seconds left. Might throw an interception, Mason. We have seen <laughs> so <what>? Jermaine, Missouri <laughs> with two of those today. He came across the field for one of those in the third quarter. Yeah, I mean, he's. Just give him a chance. I mean, oh my goodness! That's just up one player ball. you can highlight. We today. are still <laughs> backing up, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> there is well 20 seconds left to play down. in this fourth quarter. You might just get one more heave off to end it. Maybe. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I mean, 10, seconds. Seconds. ten seconds. Ten seconds. It's cl the clock is running. You better hurry. Second down and you gotta a hurry. A mile oh, to okay. go. Yep. Say hail Mary. Say hail Mary. Stop it. Oh, that's game. 
And that is the ball game, ladies and gentlemen. This one ends 65 to nothing in favor of Rodriguez. Mason, what are your thoughts on Bethel today? Uh, Bethel, uh, they just didn't come out to play today. Uh, they didn't put their best effort out there. Um, they did. They did put up a good few drives in the second half, but they were going against second strings. Uh, I think they could just take take away a lot from this game. Uh, the coach has got a lot to say on the film. Room. Yes, like you said, a lot more ether. And for you, Holden, what I'm, would you what you like from Rodriguez today? I liked everything besides the penalties. They were perfect on the offensive end, perfect on the defensive end when it came to execution. It's just the penalties. They had, I think, 10 plus penalties tonight, which is unacceptable if you are a varsity team yeah. in a, in a league like the like the Monticello Empire League. And they showed Bethel tonight. There's levels to this game, right? And, and like a big level. Especially oh, yeah. seeing how the score was tonight. Well, thank you, gentlemen. Like we said, the final score was 65 to nothing in favor of Rodriguez. I am Robert Murray. Thank you, Holden Beers and Mason Flores, for being the color commentators, along with Drew Kirby. And from the Solano Sports Broadcasting Network from here in Rodriguez, we'll see you next week versus Vanden. Ooh, that's going to be a good one.